Hi everyone and welcome to this how-to on TCC 13, our punching shear spreadsheet. My name is Emily Halliwell and I'm a structural engineer at the Concrete Centre. In this webinar, I'm going to talk you through how to design punching shear reinforcement for two columns using the spreadsheet. These are based on example 3.4 from our worked examples guide, which is available to purchase from our website. Our first example is an internal column, which is 400 by 400 millimeters and supports a 300 millimeter deep flat slab. On screen, you can see the information we need to carry out the punching shear check and design, including material properties, loading and slab reinforcement. I'll now move across to the spreadsheet and we can start by inputting our client and project details. and we can input our designer and checker as well. Generally, any text you see in blue is for you to input or select an option. We'll now input our material properties. So in our case, FCK is 30, and the other parameters are the same as the default. Our slab is 300 millimeters deep, and our cover is 30. Our column is 400. By 400 and as we have no openings we can clear these other values. There is a drop down here, um, this is for cases where you do have openings. This allows you either to show the um, real opening size or the assumed enlarged opening which is calculated in accordance with clause 6.4.23 of Eurocode 2. If you hover over anywhere with a red triangle in the corner, this gives you further information or commentary about the options available or the data to enter. We then input our loading. Um, and our slab loading here. And then I'm going to select from this drop down that beta will be based on the factors given in Eurocode 2. However, um, the spreadsheet will also calculate the factors based on the equations in Eurocode 2. And for this, you input your moments here. So you'll see that option is only available with the beta calculating option. So I'm using factor of 1.15, and then I input my slab reinforcement. Um, for the bar diameters, you can put in up to two diameters to account for alternating bar sizes and then you can put in your spacings here. If you have um, different spacings within your punching shear zone, for example, um, if you have your reinforcement concentrated over your slab, uh, sorry, over your column, then I recommend adjusting your spacing here until this area of steel matches what you expect. I'm now going to calculate um, select from my spur layer all and my leg diameter down here will be 10 millimeters. I will leave the spacing as the default, which is 0.5D. We can see that the spreadsheet has completed our design and we need 96 legs of punch and shear reinforcement with 10 millimeter diameter. If we go back to our worked example, we can see on the left hand side that this required 112 legs of links. Um, this is when designed using hand calculation methods. Um, and so through using the spreadsheet, which has given us an optimized radial layout, as shown on the right hand side, we can reduce the number of punching shear legs to 96. Our second example is an edge column with a 200 by 200 opening adjacent to it. Again, we have the details on screen for the material properties, the loading and our slab reinforcement. So if we move back to the spreadsheet, in this case, I will select the edge column at the bottom of the spreadsheet. Um, I actually know this is a locked spreadsheet, so I'll unprotect it. And then again, I'm going to input my material parameters. My slab depth and cover. So 
So in this case, I do have an opening, so I'll use these inputs um, to insert that geometry. We can then look on the right hand side um, and we've got a, a graphic representation of where our opening is. Um, this allows us to check that our input um, has given us the looks correct based on what we're expecting. We then input our loading again. Our edge load is 10 kilonewtons per meter, um, same as is already in the spreadsheet, and our area load is 17.5. Again, I'm going to use this beta using factors option, and then I input my slab reinforcement. Um, I will leave all of these others as the default values, and we can see that the spreadsheet has calculated that we need 67 legs of 10 millimeter diameter shear reinforcement. If I scroll down, um, you can see also how the reduced parameters, uh, parameters have been calculated based on the whole data I've entered in my design. One thing to note um, with openings is that some of the punching shear legs may need to be relocated to avoid the holes, and this will need to be done manually. So I've shown you how the spreadsheet calculates the reinforcement required, but it does also carry out checks for whether this is necessary. So for example, if I go up and enter a lower VED value here, say 200 kilonewtons, we can see that the spreadsheet has carried out the checks and no punching shear reinforcement is required. In addition to internal and edge columns, uh, the spreadsheet can design re-entrant columns and corner columns. You can also go to the geometry page. Um, this provides further details on the notation for punching shear reinforcement layouts. As with all our spreadsheets, um, the sheets can easily be pre -print printed as a PDF or a hard copy, for example, for checking or to submit to building control. Hopefully, this how-to has given you a good overview of using TCC 13. If you have any questions about using or purchasing the TCC spreadsheets, please email info at concretecenter.com. Thank you for listening.